Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gitty Mary and I haven't posted a video in over a week, which is wild. I have actually taken time off from YouTube to do Christmas holiday things. I haven't gotten ready today whatsoever, so you're just getting just like the pure in-between Christmas Eve and New Year's version of myself. Honestly, I am so relaxed and happy, but I wanted to check in to show you guys something that I finally am able to show you. I was invited to Google in Brussels to give a talk about sustainability and community and moreover how I am using and how many people are using social media to connect with each other and create communities that can help further sustainability and the discourse of global climate action. And I gave this talk to 100 politicians and representatives. It was an amazing experience and I finally have the video to show you. I was so flippin' nervous before doing this and I very rarely get nervous when I do talks anymore but I just felt like this was just... I was excited. I was just as excited before I did this as when I did the TEDx talk and this is definitely one of the milestones in my career as a public speaker that I'll look back on and be really proud of. I'm really excited to show you. It's about 10 minutes and I'll show it in a second. We're getting to it. I did post from Brussels with the event and I also definitely had some notes when it came both to how Google at this event was communicating sustainability and what words and etc they were using. I have notes, I had criticisms, there's definitely a lot to work on, simply just saying something is sustainable always makes me just go, hmm, what's happening? So Google having something called the Google Sustainability Summit, I definitely had notes, thoughts critiques on that. But I was excited to get this opportunity to speak. I was excited for the opportunity and the platform to talk about these things, but we have a long way to go when it comes to sustainable discourse and what we are actually expecting from big corporations and companies. So without further ado, this was my talk at Google Sustainability Summit 2023. I would like to introduce you to Gita Marie Johansson, who is a Danish public speaker, author and zero waste expert. She's created online content about sustainability and climate for about eight years now. And not alone is she creating online content, she's also written a book called Sustainable Badass. And I quite like that because we do need to get a bit badass about this climate crisis that we're facing. This is a survival guide for consumers who really want to reduce their waste and make better decisions and lower their impact. She also works with political organizations and NGOs against greenwashing and increasing accountability. So please give a very warm round of applause to Gita Marie. To kick off this talk, I would like to start by asking a simple but pretty big question. What does it take to change the world? Eight years ago, I realized that I wanted to help save the planet, which was a big daunting realization. But nonetheless, from one day to another, I realized that I had to do something. I realized that every bit of plastic that has ever been produced, every bit of plastic that I ever held in my hands still exists on this planet in one shape or form. Because plastic as a fossil material doesn't just go away it just becomes smaller bits of plastic. And plastic pollution specifically was my entryway into learning about sustainability, my stepping stone. I started my work with zero waste and that began with a 30 day no waste experiment back in 2016, in a time where the notion of sustainability was this very abstract idea that many consumers, including myself, felt no real connection. I started to show my lifestyle change online as I learned the ropes, as I developed new habits, as I found unpredicted struggles and everything else that comes along with changing your lifestyle, should I say so drastically. And that includes everything, both the ups and downs from going to the farmer's market to get package-free produce to trying to bring your own container to the movies for snacks. It includes thrift shopping, or repairing the things that break, or regrowing vegetables, or learning how to cook plant-based dishes and traveling via bus and train through Europe. In my experience, the most important green action any consumer can take, and arguably the first action that we have to take before anything else, is learning how to talk about sustainability and climate change. Because before we can act, we need to know we need to learn, we need to understand, and we need to feel comfortable talking about the fact that our planet is changing. This is intimidating and daunting and, and scary, 
either because we don't feel supported by the people around us to do so, or because we don't feel like we know enough about climate change to have a valid voice in environmentalism. But the thing is, every voice is valid in environmentalism. And we need everybody's voice to get on board if we want to invoke real, positive, long-term change. And the bigger the community, the bigger the impact. Ever since I started my zero waste journey, I have shared my experiences on YouTube. And, to, and today I have more than 600 videos online. And that includes everything from daily vlogs and impact analysis essays. It includes material guides and breakdowns of greenwashing and tips on how to avoid food waste and reviews on menstrual cups and commentaries on the efforts of corporations and companies and basically everything else. As you can tell, a lot has happened since I learned the first few facts about plastic pollution. To me, it's important that we can inspire and motivate each other. But life on social media is often very different from what the actual lived experiences look like. It's easy to, to end up creating this polished, seemingly effortless version of what the life of a zero waster actually looks like. It's easy to end up creating something that's more beautiful than what it is in real life or color coordinated and easy. I think it's important to also show all the ugly bits. And I've actually found that showing all my failures, all my trash that I couldn't avoid, all the plastic that was unpredicted, is even more so inspiring. So while my message is the same as when I started this lifestyle, namely that we need to reduce our consumption and be mindful with resources, I don't want to promote perfection because I am in so many ways not. And also, it's 100% impossible to be 100% zero waste in a society not designed for it. So we're all doomed to fail at it anyway. I realized that admitting my own flaws and normalizing during our best is a lot easier to get people on board with rather than showing how I shove three years worth of trash into a mason jar. In my work with sustainability and especially with zero waste, I have always been told by people in real life and people online that I'll never change the world like that. That my actions are but a tiny, small, insignificant drop of water in a very vast plastic polluted ocean. And the funny thing is, is that I actually tend to agree. The actions of one person very rarely changes anything, but a drop of water doesn't fall directly and smoothly. It creates ripples, impact. An impact that's often bigger than the drop itself. And I am by no means the only drop of water. It turns out we are falling from the sky like rain. Countless people with the same motivation and desire for action, anger and desire to improve not only their own lives, but also the environment around them. Thousands of people that individually have experienced someone telling them that they'll never change the world like that. Imagine if we all believed that was true. Imagine if we all believed we were doing this by ourselves. Luckily, we find each other on platforms like YouTube where we realize that we are anything but alone. And I haven't done any of this by myself, by no means. Through the platforms where I share my life, I've been fortunate enough to be able to be part of a community of like-minded, strong-hearted people from all over the world with similar values, struggles, concerns, and goals. I've created content for eight years about sustainability, but I doubt I would have been able to keep myself motivated had it not been for this community, for the people that I interact with. And I sometimes also wonder if I would have been able to keep myself motivated in my personal life for sustainability had it not been for this community. And I can tell in my comment section that people are using my videos in the same way that I am to hold themselves up, to keep themselves motivated. So it's not a type of one-way communication where they see me, but I don't see them. I do. One woman wrote to me recently that because she's been watching my videos for years, she decided to open up an eco shop in her local area. I have people telling me that they're using my recipes to normalize eating more vegetables at home. And they even kind of let me know when the skeptics in the household kind of like my plant-based beet wellington. I have people tell me that at their workplaces, they are creating no-buy communities or advocating for renewable energy or recycling. And that's all real change. Real people doing things every single day. And it feels amazing and honestly surreal that it's because of a community I helped to build. 
individual empowerment and action are essential parts in lowering our carbon footprint. But individuals and consumers can only act as sustainably as the structures and systems they live within will allow them. And furthermore, now we're in a time where we're talking about individual action a lot. I think it's important to remember that the responsibility to act sustainably rests on three sectors. Consumers and individuals being one, government politics and legislation being another, and manufacturing and industries being the last. And it's important to remind ourselves that these three sectors have vastly different impacts and sustainability means something vastly different depending on this context. It makes me think that while the world is changing, and it is changing in a very real and very scary way, the future is also full of possibilities. Because now we have to rethink everything. We have to rethink how we act in the world. We have to rethink our systems and structures and the very fabric of our society, at least if we want to maintain our standard of living. We also have to reflect upon what good quality of life even means to us now. And while this is daunting because this type of change is unpredictable and scary, it's also a golden opportunity to rebuild something that's better than what we had before. We can rebuild new structures, thought patterns, create new habits based on new values, like the value of community, the value of making things that last, designing things to last, making replacements, ra making repairs rather than replacements, and using values like inclusivity and kindness. To circle back to how social media fits into all of this, I developed my language for sustainability when I was already in the movement. I didn't arrive there fully formed and ready to talk about these issues. I learned how to express these things through this online movement. I learned how to aim critiques at what I saw in the world and explain the issue of overconsumption or see-through greenwashing. I learned how to explain the notion of individual carbon footprint and where that actually comes from. I am so happy beyond happy to be able to pass on this lesson to other people that are watching my videos. Because as we know, before we act, we need to know, we need to think, we need to understand, and we need to be comfortable talking about climate change and our changing planet. And having a language that makes us able to do that in an effective way might change the world, or at least a tiny part of it. In many ways, Sustainability has taught me to think of myself not only as an individual, but also as part, a puzzle piece in something much bigger. And I think it's when we start to think of ourselves not only as singular entities, but rather as parts of a community, as parts of an ecosystem. That's when we start to act differently as well. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste content and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!